Hello, welcome to Azure Talk. It is one another session with Sachin Kalia. Today, I would welcome Sachin Kalia again for the with the new content. Yes, Sachin, welcome. Thank you, Abhishek. Thanks for a warm welcome. Yeah. So, uh, Sachin, uh, I think you are now ready with the some demonstration of Cosmos DB, how .NET Core application would interact with Cosmos DB using YAML. Most demanding thing nowadays. Yes. Yes, it is. So please uh, go ahead. I'll be yeah. I'll be demonstrating you about uh, a .NET Core based application that interacts with a Cosmos DB, yeah. where I have created a one document, and I have kept that entire solution into Azure repo, and we'll be creating a build pipeline on that basis. Great. So let's let's jump into that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can I see believe you are also able to. Yeah. So here uh, I am into my application, and it is Cosmos DB app, right? Just placed here. And for the viewers, and this I have made it public, so you can go through with this link, and you can try to download that as well. So I am into my repo. And prior to showing you how and what code I have written for this purpose, I'll give you a glimpse about about what I have written for. And this is a one of the user interface. How does it look like? And as you can see, it is somewhere I am performing crude based operation on this mm -hmm. application. And it is a .NET Core based application yeah. where I do have product ID, name, unit price, description, and other things. If you you are able to create a one recording to this with the help of this. You can go back to the list. You can see the details. You can edit the details and you can delete as per your need, right? So this is what I have achieved through the application which I have created. And the special thing about this app, it, it has a solution which further has multiple projects somewhere it has three projects one is a model class where i have created one product.cs file okay. which has some properties already there as you can see over here unit price description image name created it another and i do have a data context layer i have a controllers the product controller is my main class where i am using cls mongodb data context and performing some operation on that. So okay. there are you there are three video. three different projects under the single solution, right? Under the single solution, yes. Okay. And most of the things as you can see over here. And once you download the entire code, you would have a better understanding about this. How does it work? So yeah, just sure. to ensure that replace replace the entire stuff uh, as as per your need, you have to change the connection string in order to move ahead, right? So moving ahead to the pipeline, uh, as you can see into our previous demonstration where I and Abhishek have already demonstrated about the .NET Core based application to create a build pipeline and to create a release pipeline over there. This is uh, somewhere an extension of that where we will be utilizing YAML in order to create a pipeline. So I would highly recommend our viewers to go through with those video demonstration as well. You would have a better understanding in order to proceed with this demonstration. Yeah. And we right. can as provide can, the link for those uh, previous demonstration link in the description in this video. Yeah, indeed. So without wasting time, uh, I'm about to create a new pipeline. As you can see over here, we do have an option uh, at the right top corner of the screen. And as soon as I click here, it op offers me various places where I have kept my code. But in our purpose, I have kept my code into Azure repo. As soon as I select that, it populates me. This is the code. Are you about to utilize? Yes, this is my code. And once you see this screen, the configure, configure your pipeline. There are various options available, but for the sake of clarity, 
I am about to utilize ASP.NET Core, which does build and the test ASP.NET Core build targeting .NET Core. And, and my application is targeting that only. And mind it, you have chosen YAML template. Yes. And once I select this, it populates such stuff by default for us, right? So I have already created my stuff, right? Let me copy and paste that. And I'll jump into this one by one, which line works in what manner, right? Yeah. So as you can see, uh, our YAML pipeline here, right? You can click over here to take an advantage of the some assistant provided by default, right? There are various options. So most of the time I have utilized .NET Core one, right? You can hide an assistant from here, triggering the master. Uh, everything I have kept for now into the master. I do have a pool which is utilizing pool, uh, which is utilizing a VM image of Ubuntu, the latest version. And I ha I'm utilizing one variable which is of release. So here uh, the main core area starts with where we do have various things available. As you can see, we do have a steps and each steps may have various tasks. So we do have almost five tasks into our YAML pipeline. So yep. what the first one does, it is restoring all the packages, whatever we have utilized within our solution related to the NuGet package. So uh, it is uh, utilizing for all these projects which are available within a solution, right? So the good thing is about how can you get an idea which task I should utilize. If you click on to the setting, as soon as you click here, it populates you the entire beautiful user interface just right next to your screen. Over here, you can choose your plenty of commands which persist here. You can use as per your need. At the very first time, I am utilizing restoring of the packages related to all these projects which are kept into my solution. Okay, moving ahead to the same. Um, once I have restored everything, I am building that. As you can see over here, once I click here, then building that, the path to projects. If you click here, the path to the projects file to use, you can use wildcard characters as well as per your need. And these are the argument which we are utilizing. As you can see, the build configuration variables which we are utilizing, it is here, right? We are using the release one. The test, you can ignore it for now, uh, but this is how you can write once you have written various unit test cases into your project. The another, another thing is the, uh, I am utilizing another .NET Core CLI property over here, uh, which is publishing our entire stuff and keeping it into the artifact staging, uh, st staging directory, right? So what this, what this task does actually, it builds the entire, whatever the section, uh, build section has built up everything. So it provides the entire stuff into the GIF format to our pipeline. As you can see, we do have a zip after publish. So we have made it true. We are publishing the web projects and keeping all of uh, keeping it available somewhere. We are making it available for the pipeline to utilize it further. Yeah. Once we are done with this, so now time to utilize it, uh, the publish artifact to drop folder. For this, I have utilized the publish build artifact as you can see over here. So I am dropping the entire zip files, whatever we have created into the drop folder so that whenever we will be creating the release pipeline, we will be utilizing these artifacts during that time, right? So, and uh, it will an, add, I yeah. quickly want to add two things for, for the viewers. Uh, the, yeah. For better understanding of this complete format, uh, two prelim preliminary things you need. Number one is the YAML understanding, and second one is yeah. the sequencing of the task because it really does matter. Sachin, over to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, uh, I strongly agree with uh, Abhishek inputs. 
so uh, these are the publishing artifact that we will be utilizing uh, down the time when we will be creating a release pipeline against this whatever we have built up so so far uh, i think uh, we are good so i have kept uh, artifact name as a sp net core drop so we will be utilizing it later and i just uh, set up uh, ci with azure pipeline i'm committing this to the something which i have made change committing it to the master once as you notice that uh, we are committing this stuff directly to the master right and job started let it execute uh, the job hasn't has started it has queued on time so i'm pausing my video for a moment let it execute oh, it has already started so won't take much time so at the very first step if you uh, just uh, align with the yaml which we have written the first time we are restoring the stuff right then we are building the stuff then we have written the test area though we do not have adequate unit test case for now but <clears throat> this is how you can write the publishing artifact which uh, this label uh, provides the entire solution into zip format and makes it available to the pipeline for further yeah. use yeah. the last one uh, which is related to the publish artifact to the draw folder and somewhere the draw folder is uh, a specific location under the pool right so once it completes then uh, you, for now you can ignore the warning session there are a few areas uh, and some variables which are not being in use and this is the reason it is prompting some warning to us that can be better ignored yeah as so you now. can see uh, we have published everything right it has run in a adequate manner right if you look at the publishing artifact to drop folder we do have over here and this is what i was talking you about so this is a sp a uh, special location where our artifacts resides actually right, right. Yeah. yeah and the artifact name if you remember we have kept asp net core drop right so this is one of the simplest way to create a pipeline uh, through yaml and we have created it for our right. own purpose i have just taken 1 minute 20 seconds yeah. to complete the build sequence yes Good yes so yeah into the next demonstration we will proceed from this place to the next level where we will be creating a release pipeline utilizing the same artifacts which we have created in this pipeline through yaml yeah yes abhishek oh that's fantastic i mean it was a great learning indeed and we have learned the new thing one is the yaml and second thing is the uh, uh, is the how to create a build pipeline it would be yes. a great art uh, in fact the video for for at least the beginners level and uh, something definitely the intermediate kind of our experienced people would also learn out of it so thank you sachin thanks for your time and indeed we will uh, wait for another good video out of you the release pipeline and expecting yeah. it coming soon yes of course uh, we will be publishing in couple of days so uh, your intro please yes uh, guys uh, you can reach me over my twitter handle which is dotnet piper you can reach me through my blog again uh, www.netpiper.com and my email id is hanging upon abhishek shoulder <laughs> yeah abhishek your turn yeah so i am accessible on twitter my handle is at the rate abhimetre and my email id is son of spm at outlook.com and don't forget to mention we are here to support the community and we usually bring some problem statement along with the solution in this talk show so this talk show is really based on the conversation right so thank you very much for watching this uh, series and uh, we would recommend you to please subscribe and like our channel thank you very much coming back soon thank you. with new article yeah, yeah thank you thank you